so today I am here to do another review on a foundation applicator and this one I've actually seen going around a lot on the internet. It's a silicone beauty blender. All right, all right, let's all gather our minds. Let's get together. Imagine a beauty blender, like see it. Now try to see it in a silicone version. That's why you get this. This right here, mm-hmm, that's what you get. So today I'll be doing a first impressions and demo on this little sponge right here. This right here is called an EV blender and it's basically, it's basically a rubberized silicone beauty blender. Now what makes this different from the Scylla sponge is that this one actually has texture to it. The Scylla sponge is smooth and like um, there isn't a dent in there. And this one actually has a lot of texture on there. It actually kind of looks like an old granny skin. It claims to perfectly blend. It is hypoallergenic silicone. It won't absorb makeup and it cleans easily and no more stains. Okay, now the EV Blender started off with a huge like Kickstarter project and I actually donated money into the project because I really wanted to see this being realized. They're actually patent pending right now. I think I donated around $60 to get two of the sponges. I haven't gotten those in yet, but the PR for the brand sent me a prototype. So with the prototype one I have here, it has a thicker seam around the center of the sponge. All finished and actual realized EV blenders won't have this, so I just wanted to put that out there. Tip for application, the EV blender works best if you swipe on the product and bounce to blend. It cleans with a makeup wipe, soap and warm water or a paper towel and rubbing alcohol. You know what, I am super excited. I've heard a lot of things about these, so <laughs> I cannot wait to bounce you on my face. <laughs> All right. All right, so it doesn't say anywhere that I need to. Of course you don't have to wet it, Nikki. Get your, get your life. Before we go in, I like to, um, it is one in the morning right now, so I'm not wearing this anywhere, but I do need a little bit of like moisture. So I'm gonna go in with the Urban Decay B6 Vitamin Infused Complexion Prep Priming Spray, just to get my like skin ready. For the cake up. For foundation, today I'm gonna go in with my Fail Proof Long Comb, Lang Comb, I like to say Long Comb, Tat Idol 24 Hour Makeup, and I'm in the color 100 Ivory Neutral. This is. It's quickly becoming my like holy grail because it's like so long wearing, yet it still makes me look like a more natural pancake as opposed to like a caked up pancake with like all the extras on it. All right, here we go. The EV blender, I'm gonna dip it into my foundation. And like it said first, well, it's got a little like dent here. So I'm thinking it's intended for your finger to go in there. All right, so I picked some, I picked a lot of foundation up. <laughs> and we're gonna swipe it in first. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. That's a lot. Can we evenly distribute the, oh no, we cannot. Okay, we're swiping it in. Okay, we're swiping the foundation in. This feels very soothing. Okay. Okay, and then bounce to blend. Bounce to blend. So immediately what I'm noticing is that it is making my foundation super matte. Like the long comb 24 hour makeup one is known to be kind of matte, but it starts off super luminous and like healthy, but right off the bat, applying it with the sponge, it turns matte. I'm also losing quite a bit of coverage as opposed to a regular sponge. Nothing like where I'm like, oh my God, like where's my coverage? But like I can notice that it's like less intense. Oh, that sponge looks gross right now. Look at that. Oh my God, ew. Okay, let's grab a little bit more for the other side. Swipe it on. Swipey, swipey. Okay. Okay, and then now let's start bouncing you blend so like you would with any other like beauty sponge like you tap it in that's kind of harsh tapping it into the skin it kind of it's a little harsh on the skin it's like literally feels like you're slapping your face with a dildo it is transforming the foundation in something oh how do people do it how do people have their brows done and go on with foundation after and not mess anything up it's 
I cannot get that down. How do people do that? So I will say that I miss a little bit of preciseness with it because it's like a lump of silicone. I don't know. I'm looking really dry. Like my face is looking a little dehydrated. It could use some moisture. I mean, usually this foundation makes me look A+. plus. Like this foundation makes me look like an A-list celebrity. <laughs> and right now, like my flaws are coming through, my redness is coming through, and I never have that issue using the Sigma blender or a beauty blender or I'm not sold on this yet. And like in all honesty, I feel like when these like weird sponges come out, people use them for a week and then they're like, you know what, let me go back to the beauty blender because that was the life. I always feel like these trends, they're like trends. Like these applicators last for like a week and they get really popular and then they die down and everyone's like, it's so good to be back with my beauty blender. You know what I'm saying? I feel like there isn't a lot that can beat the finish and the beauty of a beauty blender. But let's keep going. All right, so let me go in with some concealer. Okay, let's cancel the forehead because I cannot deal with like messing up my brows. Oh my God, it makes anything I put on my face look so dry and dehydrated. Why? Is it because of the texture? It looks disgusting. Is it because of the texture? That looks like a crusty toe. I worked way too hard on this eye makeup to mess this face up, so you better pull through. Okay, under eye, we have arrived. Oh my God, you guys. My face is not having it. I look dry, crusty, and like, it's not even blending the concealer in because it's making it so dry. What? The concealer hasn't dried up yet and like as soon as I touch it with the sponge, it like makes it dry. It's so weird. I've worked way too hard on these brows at one in the morning to deserve this. I wanted to bake using this sponge, but um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna rinse my beauty blender and try to save this. All right, so I washed my Sigma Blender sponge and some Fix Plus. I'm gonna try and reactivate like the, the concealer and like foundation because I need to save this. It's so weird because it's like whatever the sponge touches, it grabs all the oils from it and like makes it dry. So I'm thinking that this actually might be amazing for oily skin. Cause you know, you want that madness and that longevity. But like when you have dry skin like me, I feel like it's too much. And like there's too much texture on that sponge. So let me see if I can go in with my, okay, that is making it worse. I might be doomed here. Yeah, no, that, yeah, no. Um, that foundation is like caked on. It's like dried in and caked on like, it won't move. So that again tells me that this might be amazing for oily skin. I think I'm gonna have to remove my foundation, start over with my face makeup, and then give you my final thoughts. All right, so I finished doing my makeup and I am so glad that the Sigma sponge was there to save me um, after I took it all off and uh, did it again. So what do I think about the Eevee blender? I. I'm not a fan. I, I am honestly, I'm really disappointed. I had really high hopes for this because with the Scylla sponge, I was like, it's too smooth for like, you know, to fall in love with it. So when I saw that this actually had texture, that made me so happy because I think that is, I think that's a really innovative, like smart idea. But like, I feel like this one has too much texture. Like I said before, it is, Whenever the sponge touches product, it's like it's soaking up all the moisture and makes it matte. So for me and my dry skin, this is an absolute no-go, but I can imagine when you have oily skin that this is amazing for that. So unfortunately, the Eevee Blender did not break the internet for me. It did break my skin. No, it didn't. It was, it was, it was not a fun experience for me. Like, 
I'm so sorry. What do you think of the Eevee Blender? And let me know in the comment section down below if you think it would work for your skin type. As always, if you enjoyed watching this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I wanna thank you so, so, so much for watching and going through this with me. And um, yeah, I hope that the next big foundation applicator trend is gonna be a little bit better for my skin type and my needs. So thank you guys so much, I love you, and hopefully I will see you guys on the next one.